Hey guys and welcome to the channel. Today is another day and we're going to show you another video about this beautiful Grap to Petalum Bell. That's a little bit hard to say, but don't worry, it's an easy plant to care for. Now it is also known as Tachytus bellus and was originally discovered in 1972 in the northern parts of Mexico by Alfred Lau in the states of Sonora and Chihuahua at an altitude of over 1,460 meters that is 4,800 feet high. Now that's quite impressive that it's so recently discovered. There are not many plants being discovered at this time, so I find this quite interesting. Now, the bellum is native to rocky terrain with moderate sun exposure. So when you care for this plant, make sure that you also only give it moderate sun exposure. But if you live in colder climates, you should think about putting it in a southern facing window so that you get a little bit more sun at least six hours a day. Now, this plant grows very slowly and creates clusters around it. When the rosette are ready, they can become up to 10 centimeters or four inches in diameter, almost flat to the ground, and the leaves are glabrous and almost triangular shaped. And most of them are around 25 millimeter long, appearing, appearing to have a gray-like color or even bronze colors sometimes to it. Now, when this plant flowers, you can expect pink flowers. It usually happens around May to July at the top of a 10 centimeter inflorescence, you can expect the flower to be 2.5 centimeter in diameter. And like we said, it is pink, but sometimes also red, depending on each plant. The individual flower are five petal stars shaped and have dark pink stamens and white anthers. Now, if we're talking about cultivation and this plant, the bellum is cultivated as an ornamental plant. That means that this species requires more shade than any of the other parts of the family, as it is found near cliffs and grows in shade. Now, this plant comes from the Crarusale family and when it comes to what kind of soil you should plant it in think about a well draining soil so that the water goes through quickly now when you water the plant you're going to want to use the soak and dry method that means you will water the plant until it's completely soaked and water is coming out of the bottom of the pot and then you do not water it until it has become completely dry that way, you can ensure that your plant will not rot and die. It is easier and a lot more efficient doing so. You can keep notes taking down how long it takes for your plant to dry up. This will vary vastly depending on what season it is and how humid it is in the air or if it's actually cold outside or not. When it comes to fertilizing the plant, only do so during the growing season. You should dilute to half of the recommended rate and use fertilizer for cactus and succulent plant. That is the easiest way to do so. Another way is to use a banana peel to fertilize. That also works quite well and is much cheaper. We have another video on that if you want to see how you should prepare it. Now, this plant requires low temperatures so that it can flower in spring. Think about 
one month at 15 degrees Celsius or less. It can also survive short periods of time at minus 5 degrees Celsius, but only if it is completely dry. If it is not dry, you should make sure to pay in a different area, possibly indoors, where you can keep a close eye on your plant. Now, do not water or only enough for it to avoid shriveling if it is cold outside. Any cold plus water means disaster for your plant. Now, be careful to prevent rotting, especially when it's winter, low temperature, or humid air. All of these things can cause the plant to rot, especially if it's with a lot of water in the plant. Now, a common issue with this specific plant is that these tightly packed rosettes are attractive to mealybugs. Now, mealybugs are not a fun pest to handle, but they can be easily handled. If you want to learn more about how to handle the mealybugs, click down in the description and you should find either a link to our website where you can find it or a link to how to handle mealybugs directly. Now, I hope you have learned everything that you need to learn to grow this beautiful plant. And if you have not yet done so, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and be sure to watch some of our other videos. By doing so, you help our channel grow and us create more videos. Now have a good day. Thank you. Bye.